Okay, so I just posted on YouTube about the archivist, the presidential archivist. And now I want to think about, talk about China. But I'm trying to, like, you know, back it up a, a second, reel it in, reel it in. Why, well, why do I want to talk about China right now? Why am I thinking about China, especially the kind of stuff I'm thinking about China? They said today there was a news article about how they're delisting Chinese companies from the New York Stock Exchange. Now, I don't even really know what that means. I've got the most basic understanding of the stock market. If I, I if I actually engage with the stock market, I'd be like unbelievably good. But I just am not interested because something in me, for whatever reason, wants to go bond chasing, which I understand and have been told that actually not a lot of women get into bonds. And I don't understand that unless they're like lawyers. And then it gets complicated. The point of the matter is, why are they delisting Chinese companies from the stock exchange? Is it because we're about to go to war? Are we like literally like <clears throat> going there with China? See, I've been concerned that America's got this like attitude right now. And it's like talking all this shit and smack about China. And we got these like very complicated tariff schedules and tariff relations with China. And that's just one of the series of schedules around these tariffs that we've got going on in the next couple of years, like currently and in the next couple of years. And the Trump administration has spent like two, three years trying to negotiate different things with these tariffs. And there's been changes to the tariff schedules, but we got this big thing coming up in the next fiscal year. In the beginning of the next fiscal year, there's a major change to the relationship the United States has with China and Chinese companies connected to the changes in the tariff schedule. And the ironic thing is, is that it's like a refund on old tariffs. So it's kind of like you're going to get what you give. So that's how I saw it. I don't really know. But if you like keep like, if we keep piling on all this suspicion and we keep trying to uh, chastise and characterize China in this very punitive and what I understand to be at least significantly misrepresentative manner, what are we expecting as a refund? What are we expecting when those tariff schedules change in September? And then the question becomes, well, are we, are we like intentionally escalating in misrepresenting the terms of what we could otherwise be having right now with negotiating with China specifically around these tariffs and specifically in consideration of the fact that last summer the president said we were, we were entering a trade war with China, right? And then that was after the year before, talking about the threat of a trade war with China. And now they want to delist the Chinese stocks from the American stock market. See, when, they, when Obama did this shit with Russia, where he was upset and Russia was getting, like, you know, bashed or blasted for not renewing a memorandum of understanding around decommissioning of various uh, elements or aspects of the Soviet, uh, post-Soviet uh, stockpiles, right? And how that correlated with these different things like people being accused of some sort of fraud. And when they were accused of that fraud, then there were penalties that were assessed and associated with them. And, you know, there was one, the media was saying one thing, but if you looked at the actual text and you looked at what was actually going on, it wasn't that they had violated anything. They just said they didn't want to renew. You know, there wasn't a relationship, there was, a, you know, there was a, an agreement, and then the time came when they had to decide whether they were going to renew or not, and they were like, no, we don't want to renew. And so the United States was like, okay, well, now you're not going to be able to have any sort of legal recourse inside the United States. There's very specific manners in which uh, Russia was denied the capacity to have any sort of uh, legal recourse within the United States, but they maintained relationships with pretty much every other country to be able to address things with, through the, the, to have some sort of legal recourse through other countries. Is China doing something similar now? If we delist these stocks from, the, from China on the American stock market, then what is that going to do to our relationships with other countries that are being put into a position where they have to choose us or them kind of thing? Because China could still have a lot of leverage in other markets and America runs the risk right now that by doing this in this manner like this especially with all the other factors going on then we could really 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 significantly you know call the bluff and what if they're not bluffing 
What if Europe isn't bluffing with what they got lined up for next year? What if China isn't bluffing with what it had online for the fall? I'm just saying, I'm just saying, with all this other stuff that's going on that's not being addressed honestly and it's not being addressed forthrightly, this is the wrong time to be doing this kind of situation with China. This is the wrong time to be escalating it in this manner. If we've got other things going on and we got a problem with addressing our hegemony, especially when we are coding so many things to nuclear defaults, Here's a question. Let me put this in another perspective. They just announced this $240 billion uh, largesse. It's supposed to be sort of a, a capacity to balance out or to address the situation with Fannie Mae and, uh, and Freddie Mac, which have been going through this whole process of conservatorship. And not only that, there's a lot of litigation that at least uh, as of uh, a year ago, as of last, uh, last to fall, was still outstanding. People had cases, some of these cases, eight, nine years, they were trying to get these cases. About what? Hmm? And now they want to talk about Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac at this level? How much of the actual assets under consideration right now are ones that under normal trade terms, normal financial and fiscal relationships would actually be Chinese? How many of the mortgage-backed securities, for instance, that are parts of all these other deals are actually owned by or are backed by Chinese capital? Are we really trying to escalate this into some sort of unconventional nuclear warfare and this is the way we're aligning it? Because that's what it sounds like. And that's unconscionable. Because my understanding is that we've had plenty of opportunity in the United States to take a more reasoned approach and to speak toward and move on this in a manner that does not take us to this level.